We're only just beginning to understand, I think, what uh, treatment does to mental disorders, and that's true for both psychological and pharmacotherapy and other interventions. Uh, and I do see a huge potential for imaging and other biological techniques in informing us, in addition to the clinical effects that we see uh, about the mechanisms of our treatments. And at the moment, you'd be surprised to know how little we know about these treatment effects uh, at the biological level, which is quite different from probably any other field of um, medicine. So although we're really at the beginning of this, um, it, I think, uh, is a field with huge potential. Traditionally, mental disorder has been viewed very much from an environmental psychological perspective, at least I'm saying traditional over sort of the past few decades, after very early origins, like a century ago, from biology. And I think now we're having a chance of bringing these two strands together. We are certainly seeing a shift to more biological approaches, um, which can be actually uh, overdoing it. I think uh, what we need is uh, a joint appreciation of the interaction between genetic, environmental, neurodevelopmental course and brain imaging can help us because it can help us picture the brain activity for example during a state of psychopathology like hallucinations but it might also help us picture the effects of trauma for example, autobiographical events, stressful life events on the structure or function of the brain. So, so I think it could be a key technique to bring these sort of more psychological and biological approaches to mental disorder together and, and certainly I'm hoping that that would be um, the, the, the outcome of a more wide use of um, functional imaging and structural imaging in diagnosis and research. Okay. The, the, there, are, there are some fairly obvious benefits of the advent of neuroimaging over the past 30 years or more, more widely available and less invasive neuroimaging compared to what it was uh, before like the 1970s. And that's mainly excluding other courses. And we must not forget that, although rare, some cases of what seems to be a psychotic or affective disorder actually have some underlying brain pathology that is treatable. So we need to rule that out in given certain clinical constraints. There is a case for neuroimaging in psychiatry, although probably not in all patients. But I guess you were sort of referring to more to the sort of more research applications. And there we have to say that it's very much early days. I don't think we could pinpoint a clinical use for tools like functional magnetic resonance imaging in psychiatry at this moment. But uh, to give you one example, if I have a patient who experiences voices and can show them the brain scan of functional activation of, say, their auditory cortex, they'll often say, oh, this is why I'm experiencing these hallucinations, these voices so vivid as if someone was talking to me. And uh, they, they often find that helpful, not all of them. So, so uh, there are various ways in which to integrate functional imaging findings into clinical practice and this sort of kind of psychoeducation is one of them and ultimately once we have more studies we may be able to look at treatment effects in a more systematic way and then ultimately even determine possibly who will respond to what kind of treatment and who will respond to some other which is a huge clinical problem because much of our clinical decision making about treatment is very much um, haphazard and anecdotal without firm evidence in uh, from large-scale research studies of predictive factors. One concern, I guess, is or that neuroimaging, functional or structural, may picture patients as in some way determined and not being able to get out of their sort of predefined neuro neurological problems. And certainly if patients or indeed clinicians got this perspective, it would be rather counterproductive because uh, of course our hope is that we can help patients with you know, a large variety of techniques, not just biological techniques, to overcome their problems and uh, improve their 
coping abilities, which often they have already. Uh, so we, we shouldn't become fatalistic just because uh, we may find that in a large group of schizophrenia patients there may be some structural abnormality to compare to a healthy population. I think that's one sort of ethical issue. Uh, that, uh, that we must not uh, forget in our enthusiasm for finding biological markers of mental disorders.